Hello, good day everyone. In our previous lesson, we have talked about numbers. We have seen the different types of numbers. We have seen the relationship that exists between them. And we have seen how we can be able to identify them. So into this tutorial, I'm going to talk about imaginary numbers. And we have started an introduction about these imaginary numbers. Uh, you know, mathematically, an imaginary number is donated by I and uh, it is equal to the square root of negative one. And you know negative one is a real number. This is to say the square root of any negative real number will give rise to an imaginary number. For instance, if we have square root of negative four, four is a perfect square, and which uh, we know its square root is two, but this is not positive four, but negative four. To find out the square root of negative 4, we have to think of two numbers, two exact numbers that we can multiply together to get negative 4, and we do not have such numbers. Because negative 2 times negative 2 will give rise to positive 4. Positive 2 times positive 2 will give rise to positive 4, and this is negative 4. So therefore, whenever you have the square root of a negative real number, First of all, consider the real number, which we have here as 4. The square root of 4 is 2, but you have to attach i. And I will show you why. Um, square root of negative 4 can be written as square root of negative 1 times 4. This can also be written as square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. Square root of negative 1, you can see it here as i. So we have i here, multiplied by square root of 4 is 2, so we have 2 here. i times 2 will give rise to 2i, and hence the square root of negative 4 is 2i. And 2i is an imaginary number because it can also be written as i plus i, and i plus i is equal to 2i, and hence 2i is an imaginary number. So now let us look on to index operation of uh, imaginary numbers. Let's start with i to the power of 0. From loss of indices, this is going to be equal to 1 because any, because any number you can think of to the power of 0, if at all that number is not 0, will give rise to 1. So i to the power of 1 is also i i to the power of 2 is equal to negative 1 because if you square this you're going to obtain i squared if you square this square will cancel square root leaving only negative 1 i to the power of 3 this can also be written as i to the second power multiplied by i using loss of indices this is the same thing as i to the third power and i to the second power is negative 1. So we have negative 1 times i is the same thing as negative i. i to the fourth power will be equal to i to the third power multiplied by i. And we have seen i to the third power is the same thing as negative i. So we have negative i multiplied by i. This is equal to negative i squared. But i squared is the same thing as negative 1. So we have negative 1, but we have another negative. It will transform it to positive. So finally, we have positive 1 as i to the fourth power. i to the fifth power, this is the same thing as i to the fourth power multiplied by i. And we have seen i to the fourth power as 1 times i is the same thing as i. Let's look another one again. i to the sixth power. This is the same thing as i to the fifth power times i. And i to the fifth power, you have seen it is the same thing as i times i. This is equal to i squared. And i squared is negative 1. So we have negative 1. 
So these are some of the relationship that exist by taking the index of i. Some of them result to real numbers and some of them give rise to another imaginary numbers. So now let us see what happens after multiplying a real number by an imaginary number. So first we have 2 multiplied by i. This will give us 2i and 2i is an imaginary number. If we have, let's say, three i's multiplied by two i's, this is the same thing as three times two six, and i times i is i squared. And i squared, you know, is a uh, negative one. Times six, we have negative six. If we have i to the second power multiplied by three i's, this is the same thing as 3 i to the third power. And i to the third power, you have seen that to be equal to negative i times 3. This is equal to negative 3 i. So you have seen some of the relationship that exists. If you multiply a real number with an imaginary number, the result will be an imaginary number. So what about division? If we have i squared divided by i, this is the same thing using loss of indices. This will reduce by 1, so we have i. If we have i to the third power divided by 2, two i, this is the same thing as i to the second power over 2 because one of the i will cancel one i and you know that i to the second power is the same thing as negative 1 so we have finally negative 1 over 2 so these are some of the relationship that exist between real numbers and imaginary numbers by multiplying and dividing them so what happens if we add or we subtract imaginary numbers and imaginary numbers, real numbers, and imaginary numbers. If you have three i's minus i, this is the same thing as two i's, applying the same principle of algebra. If you have two i minus four i, this is the same thing as negative two i's. These are imaginary and imaginary. What about if you have real, like say 3 plus 2 i's? They are all like terms, so you cannot join them together. And hence, we cannot see this is an imaginary number because this is a real number and this is an imaginary number. Whenever you have something in this form, we call it complex numbers. Complex numbers. This is a complex number. Numbers in this form, we call them complex numbers. The same thing with subtraction. If you have like two minus four i, this is also a complex number because you cannot join them together. They are unlike terms. So this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and do have a nice day.